Um, I'm going to um, run through very quickly a few, uh, a few of the explorations that we've done, um, I suppose, in the last 10, 12 years. Um, and I begin really with with the excavations um, in briefly touching on the excavations in Insula 9, which is uh, kind of top left on your screen, uh, that finished in 2014, then touch on excavations in Insula 3, just to the southwest of the Forum Basilica, uh, excavations between 2013 and 2016, uh, touch on the temple excavation uh, on the eastern side of the town in Insula 30, um, 2017, and then the excavations which began in 2018 on the bathhouse in the southeast um, quarter of the town and uh, concluded in 2021. So a, a, a quick whiz through these excavations because time is short. Um, so Insula 9, um, excavation designed to look at the story of the town from beginning to end, um, began in 1997, finished in 2014. Um, and the publication of the last um, bit of it covering the late first and early second century is, is now imminent. So that will bring that, that project to, to a conclusion. Um, briefly summarizing, you've got essentially six uh, periods uh, other than the Victorian excavations of 1893, uh, running from the late Iron Age top left from about 10 BC, running through uh, the first century into the early second century, top right, and the extraordinary uh, building of the town, of bu buildings uh, diagonal to the Roman street grid, a continuation of, of property boundaries right the way through till the third century, then a total reorganization of the insula uh, uh, in the end of the third, beginning of the fourth century, the bottom right. So a sequence there, much of that now, now published. The, the last one to come is the, the late first, early second, the top, top right image on that screen. So Insula 9. Insula 3, which kind of stemmed out of the, the, the discovery of the recycling of high quality Roman masonry um, as early as the late first, early second century in Insula 9, uh, led to a sort of an attempt, a, a cheap and sort of cheerful excavation doing no more than re-excavating um, Victorian trenches to try and explore a building which was ill understood by the antiquarians when they dug it in 1892 um, in the southeast of Insula 3 next to the Forum. And you see there highlighted um, the, the plot that they found, which they thought might have been a bathhouse. Um, and that's partly because they were kind of linking together uh, features of completely different periods. Um, what really I think is a late Roman chondra uh, linked with a building which I think was never finished. And that's the building highlighted there on the screen with a, a nice colonnade on the right-hand side fronting onto the, the North South Street, which you can just see some of the metalling of the North South Street on the right-hand side. So an unfinished building, um, not the, <laughs> the high quality, high status building that might have been there, but um, but wasn't, um, and um, an abandoned building, incomplete. And I think because it suffered really badly from subsidence into the pits and wells of the earlier late Iron Age and earliest Roman occupation, and that was a a problem which beset Kaleva. The fact that they could continued uh, the life of the town through the Roman period led to continual problems um, uh, with buildings uh, collapsing, subsiding, and particularly the, so in Insula 3. Then um, on to Insula 30, where um, we followed up on, on John Crichton's magnetometry survey with some GPR survey in the uh, what was the farm uh, next to the church on the eastern side of the town. And um, there emerged the plan of a Romano-Celtic temple. You can see um, the 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 keller there in there, and then the surrounding ambulant tree. Um, so that was excavated in 2017. So confirmed. So that means on that eastern side of the town, there are three Romano-Celtic temples, two discovered by the antiquarians, two um, largely lying beneath the the churchyard and farm buildings, as is this one. But enough to confirm. So. If you think of approaching uh, Kaleva from the east, from London, the first thing you would have seen from 
the late first, early second century, were these three enormous um, Romana Celtic temples. Um, so that was a, a short season there. And then in 2018, um, we looked again at the bathhouse, again, really making most of the effort to try and um, just concentrate on the building, re-examining what the antiquarians found in their excavation between um, 1903 and 1905, um, and, um, but with a bit of new excavation to try and get some deposits to associate with the development of the bathhouse. Um, and we all have this sort of rather kind of clean and neat image of Roman bathhouses kind of summarized by this uh, reconstruction, which has, of course, got nothing to do with the bathhouse at Silchester, but it just gives you the sense, you know, the, the various suites of hot and cold rooms and um, uh, all in sort of pristine condition. And I think one of the, uh, the factors, uh, one of the conclusions from our uh, kind of small re-excavation -excav at uh, Silchester um, was to show that there was a continual battle to keep the bathhouse running. Um, and at some point in the late Roman period, perhaps quite late indeed, they actually gave up trying to keep the whole bathhouse going. And they were up against all sorts of factors. The uh, underlying ground of the bathhouse was built up against the late Iron Age defensive ditch um, that uh, surrounds the late Iron Age officers. So that didn't help. Um, it was very low, it was prone to flooding. That was another issue. And then the, the general wear and tear, you must imagine that a bathhouse would have undergone with the constant changes of temperature, the mold in the ceilings and the <laughs> plaster falling off the walls. You can, you can just, just imagine it. So here is the bathhouse, looking across it in um, 1904, I think this is, um, and looking across to the church, um, so it's we're looking from southwest to northeast, and you can see some of the uh, heated rooms right there in front of you. So it gives you us so the excavation opened up the building. Um, very few um, areas within the building were left unexcavated, but they didn't really explore much beyond the uh, outer walls of of the bathhouse. And they produced this plan, which. Um, acknowledged that they could see there were different periods of construction, um, but I don't think what they, they didn't appreciate the, the full significance of what they found. And some of the um, wall foundations, which are lightly shaded on this plan, uh, were the key to uh, our identifying um, a first bathhouse, which preceded a larger bathhouse of the um, early second century. So, um, it was a, a an innovative uh, excavation in many ways, in that they were sensitive to the different types and styles of masonry, but it, they didn't make a consistent survey and they didn't record what they saw other than on this plan. Um, and um, while obviously acknowledging some of the um, relationships which they spotted, they didn't see it all by any means, or they didn't record it. So over those um, uh, four seasons, uh, 2020 was, was very much curtailed because of COVID. Um, we re-excavated the, um, the, the portico fronting onto the street at the top of the screen. We re-excavated a series of hypercosted um, rooms running across the waist of the bathhouse uh, towards the lower end of the screen. And then a sequence of deposits, including a section through the Iron Age ditch, or what was presumed to be the Iron Age ditch, um, running on the, around the eastern side of the bathhouse, um, and the bathhouse sitting on its very edge. So you see the areas that, that, that we, we explored. Um, and to sort of take you through some of that story, so here's the that colonnade, um, the published image from 1905 on the left, uh, how it was in 2018, with one column base removed. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure where that's ended up. Um, otherwise, very little has changed. Um, and that's part of the first bathhouse, um, which 
dates to uh, the Neronian period, to the 50s or early 60s, almost probably the 50s, but obviously it's very difficult to date precisely. Um, so a first bathhouse um, and um, traces of that um, could be found in almost all the areas that we excavated, but not appreciated for what it was by the antiquarians. So here you're looking um, at the facade of the first um, uh, bathhouse, very well constructed using um, marmstone from the green sand from the western wheel with brick coursing, very well constructed. Um, but already you can see towards the left of the screen a change in the style of masonry of a rebuild around um, the latrine. So here's a view of that latrine in its first phase. It gets extended, rebuilt several times, but 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 there it is, um, and some of that is original first period bathhouse masonry. Um, for unfortunately, no um, preserved deposits within it, within the bits of it that we fully excavated. And now you're looking down on the corner of the peristyle around the palaestra, the exercise area uh, between the the portico coming in from the street and the main the bathhouse proper with its suite of rooms and. On the left of the screen, where the ranging rod, you can see there is a, a foundation. So that was discovered in uh, the early excavations, the antiquarian excavations, and it's on their plan. What it wasn't appreciated was that this is part of the first bathhouse. And everything else that you can see in that um, uh, slide is, is secondary, relating to the second bathhouse and its subsequent repairs. And, and again, here's a slide, we're moving down towards um, that suite of uh, hypercorsted um, spaces that ran um, west-east across the bathhouse. This is on the western side, um, looking down on that, on that space. And again, you can see here faintly running from top to bottom towards in the right-hand space, the faint line of one of these early walls. Again, recorded. Uh, and in the 1905 publication, but not appreciated for what it was. So most of what you see there relates to the second bathhouse. And then in, in the 2021 season, we opened the adjacent um, uh, space, which shows this beautiful um, extent of um, uh, heated space with the two uh, the apse ends, um, uh, and traces of the furnace, more or less slap bang in the middle of, of the slide, um, um, beautifully preserved um, and only a little damage to the stacks of, of, of pili. Some of those having suffered from frost damage when the first excavation took place. So again, most of that um, relates to what you see to the second bathhouse and subsequent repairs. But again, roughly slap bang in the middle of that image, you can see the line of one of the foundations of the first bathhouse running north, south, top to bottom on the screen. I hope, I hope you can, can see that. Um, so um, there we have. So that's um, uh, just an attempt to summarize what we know of the, the first bathhouse, some of it's projected, but just to um, give you an idea considerably smaller than its successor. So at some point, um, the bathhouse was, was abandoned, uh, levels were raised, and a new bathhouse constructed um, sometime around about, the, between about 1, 110 and perhaps 130 uh, AD. So the evidence for that, that construction, things missed in 1903-4, at first excavation. Here is a very simple um, butt joint. This is the front elevation of the bathhouse. So you're looking, as it were, what would be into and across into the palaestra, the open exercise sort of courtyard. And you can see this masonry, which is butted up against the primary wall, which is to the uh, top left of, of the image. And it's resting on foundations and um, in the front foreground, you've got um, a source of water coming in. You've got alder piles supporting it. The ground is very soft. Um, 
constant flooding from um, uh, the springs which rise here and around the site of the bathhouse. So it gives you an idea. Uh, so that was a, uh, what to us, I think, looks like a clear uh, distinction in, in build and style, but not observed as such in 1903-4. So the second bathhouse was, was larger um, and uh, perhaps involved more rooms. And if we come back now down to that corner of the palaestra, where we're looking back down on the um, trench we saw just a few slides ago, there you see that early foundation running top to bottom in the middle of the screen. Um, to the right, you see the uh, eastern, the outer wall of the second bathhouse. And then um, towards the, the top of the excavated area, you've got just the corner of the uh, peristyle around the palaestra. And most of what you see there is the re-excavation of um, uh, the antiquarian trenches. Um, on the right, we were able to dig new uh, undisturbed um, ground uh, in order to explore deposits relating to the bathhouse and to give us some clue, uh, I hoped, we hoped, to the way the bathhouse was used and how that might have changed over, over time. Uh, so moving on then, to the evidence for that um, second bathhouse here highlighted. So this is perhaps kind of obscure as you've, you've got that um, north-south wall of the first bathhouse uh, lightly um, highlighted, and then the later bathhouse with its furnace uh, space on the left in, in the brighter green, and then to the left of that is is a later a later addition. So this is one one of the things which is immediately puzzling from the overall plan from the antiquarian expert is the number of heated spaces, and it it's it was clear to them and and even more clear to us that they weren't all operational at once. Um, but working out what particular spaces were used for warm room or hot room. That's much harder to determine, much harder to come to an overall conclusion how each bathhouse functioned and how that function might have changed through time, as it certainly did with the second bathhouse. So here we're looking down onto um, what was uh, the antiquarians thought was uh, a tepidarm. I think initially it was uh, perhaps the caldarium for the second bathhouse. We can't can't be sure, and the the furnace to heat the space, the one that we can be certain of, is to the right of the screen. You can just see the slightly orangey soil of the the flue of the furnace. So that's uh, firing from, uh, if you like, from east to west. Uh, don't be confused by the stubby bits of wall. Those relate to a much later furnace that I'll come to. So. The whole of that space with the pili is um, uh, is is heated, and um, the apsidal ends are are later. So there's a kind of overview of the um, of the excavated area in 2021, and uh, towards the middle of the screen, you can see uh, uh, foundations which underlie a much later part of the bath at the base. And here they are beautifully preserved, waterlogged, resting on uh, substantial oak foundations, foundations which unfortunately have not been able to give us a dendrochronological date, and uh, a water channel uh, running around. It's very well preserved. You can see in the middle, um, the, the, the channel is beautifully preserved, but it goes right the way around um, this, this foundation. And it may well relate to um, accessing water from the ditch that's right beside it that originates at the end of the Iron Age. And then, so highlighted in blue uh, aspects of um, the uh, later bathhouse and the bits we've just been looking at are uh, highlighted in, in yellow that you see there. Um, so rectangularity, uh, a feature of this bathhouse and the uh, projections at the east and west end of the um, left-hand excavated area re re for, for um, particular uh, heated spaces, perhaps rectangular. Whereas what follows next 
is um, a, a rebuilding in, in um, with, with rounded apsidal ends. So it's it's a it's a complicated uh, story um, coming through. Uh, so that's a sort of summary view of what we think is Bathhouse Two. A lot of it is is we're just projecting wall lines, but some of it we can be confident of. Um, and it would have been, of course, lovely to have done more on this. Um, so again, giving you a sense of how it sat in the landscape of uh, the, the town, the southeast quarter of the town, looking across um, down towards, I suppose, we're looking in the direction of Bracknell, I think. Right, I'm conscious that time's running out. So then there's a really major refurbishment, which involves reconstructing the east and west ends of this particular heated area, um, heated area. so the apses at either end um, are, are new. What date? We, we have no evidence for their date, um, but perhaps query, query, late second, early third century. So a major refurbishment. I mean, is it enough to call it a new bathhouse, bathhouse three, or simply um, a major refurbishment of the second bath? I'm not at all certain. I and mean, I think one would need to do more work. But that gives you a good sense of, of that arrangement, looking down the bathhouse. And um, then there's further repairs and additions. So here you see buttressing to support um, the structure to the left we've just seen, and that runs over the nice wooden um, uh, drain or a water channel uh, under underneath it. And then you can see some of in the different colors. So in green, the apsidal uh, arrangements, the rebuilds there, um, the rectangular structure with the buttresses picked out in the pinkish color, and then another late addition and change at the, uh, on the left-hand side, the western side of the bathhouse in, in pinky orange. So change, change constantly. And then um, th this, this is new, I think, some insight is towards the end. And again, getting the dates for this, it's certainly some of these changes run up towards 400. You have the disintegration of the bathhouse as a whole, and then you have... Um, the um, construction of individual elements and furnaces that are located within what was the original building. So you can see um, uh, top left, that situation uh, down on the right, and then the, the channeled hypercourse uh, to the top right, separate entities. So the building as a whole seems to have gone. So there you have it. You're standing inside the shell of the building on the right, firing into a much smaller heated space on the left. And uh, on the right, a similar situation. So you have the, in the more or less in the middle of the screen, the cheeks of the furnace that are now heating, uh, uh, heating the space, the apsidal space. And you can see the, the pili in the space to, to the right. So a large part of that heat, heated area that had been part of the second bathhouse seems to have been abandoned. And then last but not least, um, this. Um, lying on top of the structure with the wooden water channel around it and much later is um, this rebuilding of again a heated space with these channels with the um the furnace for it lying on the left hand side in the middle there so that's and that 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 was constructed probably right at the end of the fourth maybe even the beginning of the fifth century we're still kind of working on the chronological sequence but it's a fascinating story of change uh running are running throughout and i know that time's running out and i was going to show some of the, some of the slides but I, I i will finish here with this section through the uh iron age ditch um that uh, runs along the eastern side of the bathhouse um a tremendous structure but in fact the the the, the deposits within it begin from uh from the post concrete there's no evidence that it was in fact Iron Age, or but I'm suspecting it's uh, recut uh, and used as a, a water source um, for uh, for the bath, or one of the water sources for the bathhouse. So um, it's the source of these, the water, the use of the bathhouse, this is a good thing to end of uh, after tea, um, the bathhouse water was plagued with intestinal parasites that coming out of it. Because basically they're recycling water that came out of the out of the toilet. 
And I think on that jolly note, I shall conclude. Um, sorry that I run up to my limit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mike. Um, time is nearly there, but Jaina, have you got any questions that uh, anyone has put to Mike at all? No, there's, there's only a question that I think um, relates to your discussion about verulamium. There's nothing yet in the Q&A or the chat for Mike. Anyone okay. got anything? We have a moment. I'm, I'm, I think the, a, a point that comes out of what you just said, Mike, is the amount of resources that, I mean, you're looking at, okay, it's a bathhouse, one aspect of a, of, a, of a Roman town, but lots of resources going into it at different times. Yes. Do, do we know where those resources are coming from? Have you got any, any views on that? Um, well, the, the, the first bathhouse, the, it's, um, the stone is from the Western Wheel, and that material gets recycled, it's, it gets reused, but also uh, supplemented. And then um, there's a greater reliance on flint, which is obviously a much more local. I mean, flint's accessible within about five or six miles of the town. So they, they take to using that along with, with brick. But yeah, these are it's a huge investment and they're continually having to um to repair it um and uh, address the issue of, of of flooding um which i think was a problem even with the rebuilt bathhouse of the early second century do, do you think that these resources are coming from a, a sort of single supplier or do you think it's a series of families presumably it's coming out of states and what's sold and um what do you mean who's paying for it all? yeah well i i, I that's a difficult one um mm. I guess it's coming out of the whatever income the town draws in. Um, presumably people had to pay to use the bathhouse, but that I guess would have mainly paid for um uh for um uh for the for the running of it, the day to day, because you 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 you've got timber coming in to fire the furnaces and um for the bathhouse to function, you know, competently, you've got to have um, several furnaces going at any one time so there's a huge consumption of fuel and then the activities which I was going to touch on that you know if I, you know can't talk fast enough really <laughs> um, some of the act some of the things that they got up to in 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 um in the bathhouse you know some of the activities and some of the you know, the the food retailing the games the um the writing and the uh the poetry the poetry written within the bathhouse um <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a nice graffito of a quote from Virgil's Aeneid, book three, from the bathhouse. Okay, uh, one final one quickly, if, if I may. Uh, Mary was just asked a question, which is about the parasites and where whereabouts they were found. Well, they've been found throughout the fill sweep sequence of the ditch that you saw that profile in that penultimate slide. So they're there throughout, but also rather alarmingly, they're found on some the earliest ground surface beneath beneath um, beneath the first bathhouse. So the ground seems to have been polluted from right. day one. But it's the lowest part, and I suppose if waste was just trickling down the slopes into the muddy hollow where the bathhouse was built it was likely to be polluted so basically everywhere okay well mike thank you very very much indeed it's, it's always great to see you and it's always nice to hear about sorchester good uh, to see course. you harvey yes thank you